Hello, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join us today for this exciting webinar bring, being brought to you by Syntica. My name is Gabriel Escalante, and I will be your host for today's webinar. The webinar today is entitled Virtual Demonstration of the Item System. Today, we'll have two presenters, Dr. Selena Ann, Application Specialist at Avim Technology, and Dr. Nilo Farco Sravi, Product Manager within the Imaging Division at Syntica. Allow me to provide some background information about our guest speakers. Dr. Selena Ann has been working in the intravital imaging research field since 2014. She received a PhD in the Graduate School of Nanoscience and Technology from the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology in 2020. Dr. Ann has focused her research on understanding in vivo multi-phase spatial temporal cellular dynamics of transplanted HSPC in bone marrow during early engraftment using a custom de designed video rate intravital confocal microscopy system. In addition, she has extensive in vivo research experience in comp on comp comprehensive 3 3D spatial temporal visualization and imaging analysis of various organs such as lymph node, lung, liver, spleen, and brain. As an application specialist in IVM technology, she provides hands-on practical support for researchers in various research fields to take full advantage of intravital imaging techniques to maximize their research performance. Nilofar is a trans transnational medical scientist specialized in regenerative medicine and molecular imaging. She holds a PhD from the University of Toronto and a master's in science in biomedical engineering from McGill University. Her work has been centered around developing novel technologies for the minimally invasive diagnostics and therapeutics. She has extensive experience in designing and developing platforms for intravital, intravital imaging, as well as uh, post-acquisition analysis. Nilofar also serves as an advisor for the Academy of Osseo Integration and has a successful track record in obtaining national and international awards. She is the author and inventor of high-impact publications and patents in the fields of molecular imaging, implantology, regenerative medicine, and wound care. During this webinar, we will provide you with molecular imaging methods in brief, examples of intravital microscopy used for real-time visualization of tissue of live tissue organs. Additionally, we will also demonstrate the IVMMS, a new rapid all-in-one technology for intravital microscopy. Finally, we will finish the with animal models and applications examples of the technique. After the, this webinar, you will understand the workflow of the IVM system, its hardware and software components, and its capabilities to acquire quantifiable microscopic images from dynamic processes occurring in live animals. As some of you may know, Syntica is the distributor of IVM's intravital microscopy platform systems in North America. And today's webinar is the final session in a four-part series, so if you're interested in viewing the previous session, please visit our website. Before we begin, I'd like to briefly mention a few housekeeping rules. We anticipate that today's presentation will be 45 minutes, so we will have time to answer uh, your questions live. Please feel free to submit your questions to the Q&A dialog box throughout the presentation. Additionally, we will create a transcript of the questions and we'll distribute this document within the next week or so. Please also note that we're recording today's session, so if for some reason you lose your connection or cannot hear everything clearly, you will have an access to the video file to review later. Without further ado, I'm going to pass things over to Nilfar and Dr. Ann. Thank you so much for the introduction, Gabrielle. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for attending our virtual demo of the IVM system today. My name is Nilufar Kosravi, and I'm going to get you started by a short introduction to the intravital microscopy system um, and its components. Um, to refresh your memory on the system and give you a little bit of background to those of you who missed our previous uh, webinar sessions. Then I'm going to pass it over to my co-host, Dr. Selena, and uh, she will show you the procedure for preparation of the animals and then imaging of various external and internal organs for, uh, um, of the body. 
so I, IVM system uh, is an all-in-one intravital confocal and two-photon microscopy system, which is designed and optimized for imaging of live animals. So those of you who are familiar with the world of intravital microscopy would know how using conventional confocal microscopes for animal studies can be technically challenging as you uh, as users have to prepare every single component and function of it by yourself. So the main challenges uh, and limitations lie within the depth of imaging and also motion artifacts due to lack of proper stabilization of the animal and also uh, some of the physiological activities such as breathing and the brain uh, pulse will cause artifacts to your images and ultimately taking care of the animal welfare and the temperature control is kind of challenging with the conventional uh, confocal uh, microscopes. IVM Technologies uh, has come up with a solution to make intravital microscopy easier and reproducible for non-expert as well as for experts. This all-in-one single box package enables easy installation, operation, and maintenance. And it comes with a hardware and software that are co uh, optimized for ultra fast imaging and which offers no limitation in imaging various uh, internal organs. So this system is equipped with live, live motion compensation function. So it helps us uh, get the high quality images of moving organs. And also there it comes with specific hardware uh, that has been integrated in the system to maintain animal normal physiological conditions. I'm going to touch upon all these functions and elements uh, throughout out the presentation and we're going to show uh, all those. Um, there are uh, four different configurations for this system. Uh, it comes uh, as a confocal only system or a two photon only system. And we also have one which is ha has a combined confocal and two photon laser. And the newest version is a smart system, uh, which is a two photon smart system having a laser uh, fixed at 920 nanometer wavelength for uh, deep tissue imaging. So very quickly, I'm going to remind you about uh, the this microscopy techniques. What is a confocal and what is a two photon? If you don't have any background, then you never used it before. Confocal microscopy is an optical imaging technique that uses a pinhole to block out of focus light coming from the background uh, tissue. So it uh, increases optical resolution and the contrast of the images acquired. As you see here in the examples, um, it has a, a great contrast between the tissue and the background. So it basically offers you this capability to optically section the tissue as you go deep through the tissue. So uh, that's why it gives you a high resolution. Two photon microscopy, uh, on the other hand, is a technique that utilizes two photons of a longer wavelengths instead of one photon, but these two photons have lower energy to excite uh, fluorophores. So as you might know, uh, components of the tissue, such as hemoglobin, absorb and scatter incident excitation light of most uh, visible wa wavelengths. So this would limit light penetration and it would result in low emission signals that are difficult to detect uh, cons consistently. Um, the two photon technique um, uses uh, near infrared excitation light. And since uh, tissues are effectively, uh, a lot of them transparent at these wavelengths, the background signal is strongly suppressed. So um, the combination of these effects that uh, I just explained increases the penetration depth and reduces the photo bleaching of your sample. So that's why often for deep tissue microscopy, two photon is um, used instead of a confocal. And also a, a great feature of it is that with a two photon laser, chameleon laser, you can, um, it gives you the ability for label free uh, imaging uh, uh, via second harmonic generation. So this uh, second harmonic generation is usually used to uh, look at fibrous tissue as it shows fibers very well. Um, so fibrous tissue, fibrous tissue such as bone and muscle. And this uh, example, we have uh, imaged muscle, you will see uh, the sarcomer 
uh, visualized by second harmonic uh, generation and vessels are in uh, CD31 blue and then you will see the neuromuscular junction uh, in uh, yellow. Um, now that you have a little bit of background about the techniques, uh, I'm going to uh, talk to you about the components of the system. So this is um, like other microscopy uh, units. This comes with a microscope body, the black and white box. And there's underneath the two photon laser box and there is a system power supply. Of course, it comes with a computer and a screen to monitor. And then there is um, a stage controller uh, to um, control the motorized stage. And there's the heating pad controller for uh, animal physiological control. Um, there are some accessories uh, associated with uh, this system that it's, uh, it's unique uh, to this instrument. Uh, this is this body temperature control system um, that you will see on the top uh, left-hand side. And then we have inhalation anesthesia set, which is a custom design for this instrument. If you have used uh, anesthetic agents with, uh, in conjunction with wind chambers uh, in the past, you would know that it's hard to fit the nose cone and the window chamber all together. So we have optimized all these equipments to be um, going well with the window chambers. And then we have uh, this imaging window chambers uh, and the holders you see at the bottom uh, left-hand side. This is an example of thoracic window chamber model. And um, on the left, we'll have a stereotactic mount for uh, brain imaging to stabilize the head. Um, as I uh, mentioned briefly before, the animal maintenance platforms that uh, this instrument comes with, uh, it has a plate heater that can maintain body temperature. Um, it is connected to a rectal probe, which sends feedback to the system and the temperature is automatically adjusted. Um, if you need to move an organ slightly out of the body uh, for imaging, then there is a tissue temperature heater with integrated grass cover slip that comes in contact to the tissue and kind of plays the same role as the rectal probe and it sends signals and automatically controls and maintain the temperature. So you need to keep in mind that um, if you're imaging a number of animals, uh, so you need to change this cover slip when switching from one animal to the other to control, uh, to stop uh, the contamination. So another uh, cool feature of the system is uh, the design of it, which is designed as a closed box with a sliding blackout door. So it protects your uh, experimental sample uh, from ambient light. So unlike other microscopes that you needed to be uh, placing them in a dark rooms with a uh, um, curtains running from ceiling to the floor. So this one can be placed in any room with any lighting source that uh, you desire to have in your room. So without needing to worry about the light penetrating your uh, chamber. Um, so now I'm gonna briefly mention about the window chambers and I'm gonna go back to it later on through uh, the webinar. If you are planning to perform uh, longitudinal studies, you are required to place window chamber in your animals to A, to optically expose the organ or tissue of your interest, uh, B, to preserve the area from all sort of infections because when you go put back your animals to the cage uh, to recover from the, let's say, anesthesia, then you need to protect the area which was exposed for the experiment and you can uh, keep the animal healthy for your next time point. So that's the role basically the window chambers are playing. Um, and it this allows you to uh, track one animal over time, which reduces the variation between animal to animal in your data. And also it uh, reduces the number of animals in your, used in your cohort, which is ethically very important. Um, so we have collected uh, a series of videos to show you examples of imaging procedure with or without window chambers. So we were planning to do this uh, demo live uh, in the lab and show you as we were doing all these experiments, but uh, due to ethical concerns, we, we were unable to uh, video uh, live in the lab. So, but did I, we 
tried our best to bring these videos to you in a way that you see all the steps clearly. So in these videos, we will walk you through the procedure and show you how uh, this um, um, experiments work and what type of results you can expect from uh, this type of experiments. For today, uh, we have picked a few models to demonstrate. Uh, first, we're going to start uh, by showing organ models. Um, the first model is an external organ model, which is ear skin. It's very uh, minimally invasive. You basically uh, need to do a very little preparation before you can uh, get images. And then we're going to move uh, towards uh, imaging internal organs, such as spleen and lung. Um, and then at the end, uh, I'm going to show you some videos of the procedure for placement of cranial, dorsal, and thoracic window chamber models, and some of the images that we collected using uh, these models. So before we get into uh, um, the lab area and start to do the imaging, we need to start up the system. So this is like any other instrument or microscope, of course, you need to switch the machine on. And uh, typically before you switch um, the entire power box uh, and everything else or pull up the software, we need to switch on the laser. So uh, the reason is we need the laser to be warmed up for five minutes before we turn on everything else. This is uh, really important. And then we switch on the machine itself, and then uh, there is a software that we uh, um, uh, click on. It's called IVM Engine, and we gives us uh, give it give it a few seconds to for the program to boot. Um, so uh, I'm going to quickly walk you through um, the graphical user interface of the software and come up some of the function that the software does uh, before Selena going to show you um, everything in detail. So there is a capture tab where you control the capturing your your images uh, um, like videos and all those sorts of controllers. And there is a control tab, which is uh, very crucial for you to set up your experiments. You need to set your uh, two photon laser power and the detector. Uh, for, uh, for operation. And there is a Z stack function which sets you up automated imaging along the Z stack. If you are uh, trying to image a thick section, you need to set up a Z stack to go through the tissue. And then there is a mosaic function. If you're setting up an automated uh, image along the X and Y plane uh, to increase your uh, y, uh, field view. And then you need to tile these various images that you acquire. Let's say if you want to image a two by two uh, a millimeter area, then you need to collect, uh, let's say, six images and tile them together. So that's the role of the mosaic uh, function. And then there is time lapse, which uh, gives you ability to image over time at preset time uh, intervals. Let's say uh, I can set uh, for the course of 10 minutes, take one image out of our, uh, my ROI at every uh, 20 seconds. So that's uh, it, it helps you to correct the series of images, which we can, uh, you can later turn it on into a video. And there is a multi-position tab, which allows you to take a, a image of multiple positions, random position around your tissue. So it automatically uh, does this imaging for you, the software. And you also have uh, ability to combine all these uh, functions. Let's say you can do time lapse and multi-position and tile. So it's all possible. Uh, it depends on your experiment. And at the end, there is an IVM uh, studio, which uh, is um, prepared for uh, processing and analysis of your images. So uh, to li uh, little talk about a little more about uh, the controller tab. Uh, so um, this is to set and adjust the laser power. Uh, let's talk about the laser power for a bit. It really depends on the tissue you want to look at. You choose your uh, laser power. It's I would say to give you an idea of the uh, number, uh, I would say normally it's set uh, around 20%, uh, but it really depends on how you deep, uh, how deep you want to go in the tissue. 
and uh, what you want to look at. So when we use a high power, uh, let's say to look at tumor because tumor is dense. And if you want to look at the mass core, you need to crank up the laser. So that's this, this is the same story for deep tissue imaging. You need to increase the laser to get more signal. Um, the detector, on the other hand, is your gain. So if you, of course, increase the gain, you will receive more signals, uh, but from your uh, area of uh, imaging, but of course, you're going to also get more background. So it's important to find the right balance between the power and the gain for every channel that you're imaging to get the best contrast. Um, so after it's pretty straightforward, you set the folder and the directory for the files you're going to save. Um, you select your objective lens. Um, so it depends on what lenses you're going to uh, physically uh, place into your uh, configuration setup. So it can go as low as 4x or as high as 100x or 60x. Um, so, and some of these lasers are dry or some of them are in uh, water or oil immersion to include, uh, to increase the resolution. Um, and then there is a size of the image that you can um, adjust. Uh, so it's usually, uh, it's 512 by 512 pixels, but of course you're gonna, you can go higher 1024 uh, by 1024 and, um, you need to keep in mind if you increase the size of the image and you're going to be also increasing um, uh, the scanning time, which means that uh, it will be more time that uh, your laser uh, interacts with your tissue and increases uh, the photo bleaching. Um, so next, before we uh, acquire the images, we need to select our uh, channels. Um, so there's uh, multiple like fluorescent channels, uh, green, red, yellow, far red, that we can image with the system. There's whole uh, spectrum range. Um, but let's say uh, you can also assi assign pseudo colors to your channels, but typically people assign green to GFP, red to RFP, but this image is gonna at the end come black and white and you're free to choose your colors in these images. Uh, when we set all these components, I would say these are the basic components that I walked you through. So at this stage, uh, the system will be ready to acquire images or uh, record uh, videos. So um, at this point, I'm going to passing it over to Selena to show you the procedure for uh, preparation of the animals and uh, acquisition of uh, the images. Thank you, Nilifar, for the introduction. Hi, everyone. I'm Selena from IBM Technology. Here, I'll talk about the experimental procedures of the intravital imaging of various organs using IBM system. Uh, let me introduce how to do the in, in vivo imaging of ear skin or intravital imaging. Grab, gently grab the mouse um, for the injection like this. The mouse was anesthetized by IP injection of ketamine and xylazine. Before we imaging, uh, blood vessels were fluorescently labeled by intravenous injection of anti-CD31 monoclonal antibody, uh, which is conjugated with a fluorophore or various fluorescent dyes such as uh, FITC dextran, TriTC, or rhodamine B was injected via tail vein for the in vivo blood vessel labeling. Here, a uh, tri -TC dye was intravenously injected to the mouse model. Then the imaging area of ear skin was shaved with the hair remover cream for preventing visualization of high autofluorescence signal expressing from the hair. Then we applied a cream evenly to fully cover the hair on ear skin. Then after a few minutes later, um, gently remove the cream and clean it, clean it with saline solution. Then the mouse model is mounted on I-beam stage with uh, heating plate functions and apply saline on the surface of ear skin imaging area 
then cover with cover sleep, then place the ear in the middle of cover glass, as shown in the movie, uh, for preventing air bubbles to be captured in the imaging field. Then make the imaging tissue fully attached to the cover slip. After that, um, drop the distilled water on cover slip or immersing objective lens with a rectal proof for sensing the body core temperature, which has a feedback system with the stage heating plate. The mouse body temperature is maintained at uh, 36 Celsius degree during the whole imaging time. Then the place the imaging area in the middle of objective using stage controller, X, Y, and Z axis. Then adjust the focal distance by minimizing the distance between specimen and objective lens using a stage stop and close the door for preventing light from outside. When we look up the imaging software, uh, actually this model is IBM CM both confocal and two photon microscope are combined in one system. And this time we select the confocal mode here and then start playing scanner for acquiring imaging with 1024 pixels each in X and Y. And turn on the laser power of each channel and detectors. And then just control the detector gain with master controller. Then set the averaging rate as one. We're setting the directory file to save the acquired data. Click set folder and set the directory file. And in the note, uh, we can set file name to be created by following the numbering. And then later shutter on for initiating the excitation. And then lower the stage in Z axis using stage controller until we find the vocal signal. In a live window, we can see the real time fast dynamic movie. Here's the raw movie data of blood dynamics in ear skin. We can see the fast dynamics of RBC flowing in the blood vasculatures. When we capture this, we can get the result image on the image display window in the right. After, after finding another interest imaging area, capture the image and here comes the result raw image file. And when we record the real time video, Then this is the real-time movie of blood flow in the blood vessel in air skin. After that, um, if we click open folder, then we could find every uh, raw data we acquired in the directory file. Actually for the image data we captured is created as PNG file. And in case of recorded movie data, will come up with the AVI file. And for acquiring the clear data from the moving animal uh, by checking motion compensation function, and then select the channel for the registration reference, which is normally includes some non-moving object. Then after capturing, we can get the uh, compensated clear image on the right. for the compensation. Uh, this is the result with and without motion compensation function. Uh, the image without motion compensation looks very shifted with motion. But while after compensation, we can get very fine and clear images in the right. 
with IBM Studio, the image processing software, uh, we can process the data after data acquiring using engine software. Then open the folder we got. We can see the movie and the image data here. And also we can control the brightness and the contrast of the data on the color tab and can crop or make an annotation in image tab too. And also um, in image processing tab, we can make the data uh, which is acquired with uh, image mode such as Z-Stack, time-lapse, and mosaic functions to be registered along Z-axis or time frame and make a projection and also tiling image in this tab. And every image mode automatically created uh, they, with their own files and each mode tab is activated accordingly. And for intravital imaging of spleen, the skin near the spleen was firstly shaped with a hair clipper to trim the long hairs on the skin for applying the hair removal cream. And then apply the declaratory cream to fully cover the hair for a complete hair remover. After a few minutes, uh, gently remove the cream with a dry ear tips. And then clean with saline and a cool swab. The imaging target tissue, the spleen, uh, was exposed with the skin incision using various uh, surgical tools such as tweezers and surgical scissors. And then widely open the uh, skin to fully attack, to, to fully uh, approach to the imaging organ. And then gently take it out using ear tips and place the wet gauze under the imaging organ. Then the mouse model is mounted on IBM stage with a uh, hitting plate functions. Then apply cell line on the surface of imaging area using ear tips. Then place the specimen in the center of the stage and cover with cover slip. And drop the distilled water on cover slip for immersing objective lens. Insert the rectile proof which is optimized for tissue temperature control module. Then adjust the focal distance between the imaging sample and objective using stage controller. And close, both, close the both side of doors for preventing light from outside. And this is the result of in vivo imaging of spleen and pancreas. Uh, we could visualize real-time cell dynamics of the endogenous uh, monocyte and dendritic cells in spleen by using CX3, CR1, GFP transgenic mouse. And this is the example of pancreatic eyelid cells imaging using MIP, GFP transgenic mouse. Those ILF beta cells in pancreas were visualized in vivo and their cell dynamics and the development of violet cells were monitored in long-term basis by using the intravital abdominal imaging window. As you can see here, we can get the real-time cell dynamics of uh, islet beta cells in pancreas, uh, in spleen, sorry. For intravital imaging of liver, uh, the abdominal skin near the liver was shaped with a hair clipper too. And then apply the clarity cream again to fully cover the hair. After a few minutes later, uh, gently remove the cream with uh, ear tips. 
and then clean with wet gauze with saline to remove the cream fully on the skin. The imaging tissue liver was exposed with the skin incision. So incise the skin wide enough to easily approach to the target organ, which is liver. Yeah. Mm. Incise it widely enough and then gently take the, the organ tissue slightly out of the body using ear tips and place the wet goes under the imaging organ. The mouse model is mounted on I-beam stage with a heating plate and slightly covered with cover slip. And uh, this is the example of the nanoparticle delivery and accumulation in the liver sinusoid capturing by real-time video. The red fluorescent nanoparticle were delivered in liver sinusoid right after the injection via tail vein catheter and then accumulated to the specific size of the liver sinusoid a long time. You can see the dynamic of the nanoparticle accumulations to the specific size. When we apply this uh, live uh, in vivo liver imaging technique to the fatty liver disease mass model and liver fibrosis model, we can clearly visualize the development of the fibrotic collagen and the lipid drumlet in liver tissue. And uh, for the experimental method of window imaging chamber mouse model for longitudinal in vivo imaging. I'm going to pass over the presentation to the Nilofar. Thank you. Thank you, Selene, uh, for showing us the procedure. Um, so I'm gonna uh, now walk you through the procedure for placement of uh, window chambers, as I promised. So um, now you observed the basic steps that you take through the imaging process and uh, to look at organ models, um, different various organ models. I'm now going to quickly show you examples of placing window chambers for, uh, as I mentioned, sake of longitudinal imaging. I'm going to start with uh, the cranial window chamber model, which is uh, usually used to uh, look at uh, subcranial tissues such as dura matter and brain. So here you see the procedure pretty similar uh, when the animal is intubated and then you will uh, make an incision into the skin and the clear area out of uh, periosteum and you use a high speed drill with a terrifying attached at various diameters that you wanna cut. You loosen the bone and then with a forcep or tweezer, you flap the bone out and then you use a dental restorative material to uh, cover the area uh, basically to uh, secure a cover slip in place. Um, so this material is used clinically, so there's no harm to the animal. Um, and then you use a light curing uh, unit uh, to polymerize and stabilize uh, this uh, adhesive. So you make sure that your cover slip is attached uh, to the skull. And then you uh, mount the animal on a stereotactic mount of, uh, designed for cranial and you put it under the microscope for imaging. Um, so this is the example of uh, what you will see uh, through a cranial window chamber model. Um, and so this is uh, a, a imaging of a uh, blood brain barrier model and the Alzheimer's model. So you will he see here on the image on the left hand side, uh, nicely uh, uh, endothelial cells are lining up, which are labeled with uh, CD31. Um, in blue, and then there are pericytes, uh, those uh, cells that are um, um, wrapping around the vessels, those are mesenchymal cells that they 
um, have the regeneration capabilities. So they're, they are labeled with a, a red fluorescent protein, but the reason that you uh, see them um, purple in this image is because of the overlap between the two channels uh, of red and blue, as these vessels are uh, meant to be tightly bound to the vessels, uh, sharing a membrane with endothelial cells. And there are astrocytes that are uh, labeled with uh, YFP. So this type of images allows uh, um, analysis of uh, vascul vasculature in 3D, and you can track uh, the changes to the morphology of the vessels over time um, as you're uh, imaging through the cranial uh, window chamber. So um, this is an example of an optically cleared brain tissue. Uh, so it clearly shows that how deep you can go uh, with uh, two photon uh, imaging. It can go up to one millimeter if you look at the scale. Um, so for brain is one of those organs that you can uh, go really deep into as it's not fibrous. Um, and here you will see uh, the neural cells that are labeled with YFP. So now the next procedure is a placement of the dorsal skin uh, window chamber. So we have the hardware uh, custom design uh, for uh, this um, window chambers. You place uh, the substrates around the skin and then you tighten up with screws uh, to fix it in place here. And then to make sure it's tight sealed, you can suture around this uh, substrates. Um, now you make sure there's uh, no fluid coming in or going out. And the skin on one side of uh, the um, um, window chamber can be just thinned. So you can get a, a clear, uh, like a better resolution. And also on the other side of uh, the chamber, uh, you put water on top to increase the resolution. And then you, in the other side, you can inject uh, two more cells uh, to inoc inoculate your samples uh, for cancer models and you place car slip uh, on top of the area to preserve it. And this is the ring you uh, put it to secure uh, the car slip uh, in place. So uh, to ensure that uh, no agents can penetrate into the uh, imaging area um, and there will be no artifacts. So now you place it under the uh, microscope on a microscope stage and you go through your uh, common imaging procedure. So you can, uh, you know that uh, it, this is safe to put this animal back to the cage and bring it back for your next imaging time, time point. So this is an example of what you would see uh, through the dorsal skin window chamber. And this is monitoring of nanoparticle uh, delivery to triple negative breast cancer. Um, so a drug is um, delivered uh, via nanoparticles uh, to uh, the tumor cells here, um, which are uh, labeled uh, with uh, GFP. And the nanoparticles, which are really small here, if you want to look at it, you need to magnify, but you can still see them uh, in red uh, in these images. And there are vessels which are labeled with uh, CD31 in blue. Um, so you will see that this is a longitudinal imaging, so which is captured two hours, six hours, and 24 hours post uh, injection of these nanoparticles uh, intravenously. And you can monitor the progression and regression of your tumors uh, over time, and also the effect of these uh, therapeutic agents. So the next uh, window chamber model that I'm going to show is the thoracic window chamber model to image uh, the moving organs, such as lung and, uh, and cardiac tissue. So the procedure is pretty similar to the others to start with. Um, you uh, intubate your animal and you uh, surgically expose uh, a lung or cardiac um, by creating an incision into the skin. 
and you place this is uh, the look of the thoracic window chamber as you see here there is an airway um, associated with this chamber which uh, is custom designed and it's um, connected to a vacuum pump so when you turn on the vacuum pump uh, it allows to suck the air and allows a small portion of your uh, liver or cardiac to be um, coming closer to the car slip so you can stabilize that with a vacuum based uh, method and you can image uh, that area but still it's going to be a moving organ uh, so um, if we don't have uh, this motion compensation function, you won't be able to see this uh, tissues clearly. So you see the example image taken through this window chamber uh, from long, and there are vessels that are showing up in green, and there are uh, circulating uh, neutrophils that are in red. Um, so the quality is really good for a, a moving objects such as long. And now this is an imaging of cardiac uh, tissue, another model that we can use the thoracic window chamber to look at. You see how, how dynamic is this tissue moving. Um, so um, this is the live scanning, which you see the beating heart here. And with the motion compensation function, we can get a clear non blurred image of this uh, tissue. So, you will see here uh, the lymphatic vessels that are labeled in GFP, and there are blood vessels that are uh, labeled in red, and there are just different in sizes that you will clearly see the capillaries versus lymphatic vessels in the heart. Now I want to end today's uh, demo presentation with this beautiful slide, which uh, shows you how uh, we are capable of imaging almost every organ or tissue that you can imagine uh, in animal's body. So you can look here at the adipose tissue, um, skeletal muscle, lung, ear skin that we already show you, uh, lymph nodes, uh, retina, small intestine, kidney, and so many others. Uh, so you just need to um, design your experiment and come up with your uh, research question. This instrument will help you look at um, every organ or tissue at the single cell uh, level resolution. Um, so thank you everyone for attending today's session. Now I'm going to hand it over uh, to Gabrielle to moderate the question and answer session. Thank you, Dr. Ann and Neil for, for the great discussion today. We'll now move on to the live Q&A section. We have a couple of questions and the first one is, does the IVM uh, system have a resonant scanner? Oh, uh, I'll answer that question. Uh, actually, uh, as our system is using polygon scanner system, while the the microscope from other company using resonant or galvanometer sets. Uh, so thereby the default imaging quality is quite better than any other company's system. More fast and better image quality with equivalent illumination of the imaging field. In addition, uh, we, the real-time uh, average recording such as D-mode and motion compensation function and denoise function all together help users to acquire the high quality data in real time, real time frame rate. Thank you very much, Selena. The second question is for vascular imaging, would you use confocal or two fold in laser? Oh, we have both of them. Uh, we got a confocal system and multi photon system and the combined version of the confocal and uh, two photon microscope system. So all of them are very uh, real fast dynamics we have. Uh, so I need to add one more point that uh, both single and two photon uh, imaging are capable of capturing uh, the vessel structure. So it really depends on the, how deep uh, the vasculature is in your tissue. So if you want to really go deep, uh, you need to use uh, the two photon laser. Um, and the ones that are more superficial can be captured with confocal, but both gives you like a high resolution for vascular imaging. Thank you very much for the answer. The next question is, in your motion compensation software, what is the 
what is it different from rigid and non-rigid registration? Actually, uh, I didn't understand what is rigid or non-rigid regi registration. Oh, oh, now we got uh, 30, 30 to 6 frames per second video rate. And OK, oh, could you explain what is the resist and <laughs> non-resist registration? So I'm guessing we're going to get in touch uh, with this uh, attendee so that we can clarify all the questions that he has and give him proper answers. OK, very good. Uh, yeah. For now, we're just going to move on for the next question, which is, what's the imaging time window after injection of vascular dyes? Um, OK, uh, for vascular dyes, um, it usually, let's say, for a healthy animal which has um, proper uh, blood circulation, like vascular circulation, no leaky vessels, no tumor, uh, no injured area. The time window um, that I can have on top of my head, it's, uh, let's say, the, the dye can stay in the vessels for up to 30 minutes after intravenous injection. But also it depends on the size of uh, your uh, agent, labeled agents. For example, we have different molecular weight uh, dextrans. So if you need to look at the leakiness of the vessels, as people usually um, used to look at uh, tumor vessels, then you need to uh, inject um, a small molecular weight dye so you, they can leak out of the vessels. But if you, for normal vascular imaging, if you use a high molecular weight dextran, for example, it can stay in the vessels properly with no leaking, uh, good contrast for uh, up to uh, at least 30 minutes, I would say. Thank you for the great answer. The next question is, would this system be capable of being incorporated or built into a biosafety cabinet? or downdraft table for live imaging or infectious diseases? So the size of the system is slightly like the uh, microscope itself can fit uh, under a biosafety cabinet. Um, but uh, I assume if there are uh, channels that can be connected uh, directly from uh, the biosafety cabinet, uh, just moving the sample from the BSC to the, the system, as the good feature of it is that's a closed system. If you want to keep the inside sterile, just wipe it with a uh, disinfecting agent. It can be clean. And then you can put your samples and then put it back under the biosafety cabinets. Uh, that's the way I can think of. Otherwise, this is uh, the instrument is not small. You cannot put it under a BSC. Thank you, Nilfar. We're going to move on to the next question, which is, which objective lens is good enough to look at cells? Um, okay, yeah, it really depends on the size of the cells uh, you can, you want to look at. Um, we have, the cells have a very wide range of sizes. For example, um, I can think of mesenchymal cells being uh, a bit um, a large. So you beat the 10x objective, you can look at these cells. Like you can look at any cells kind of with a 10x objective, but you won't be able to see the morphology of the cells. If you move towards the 20x, uh, 20x is good enough, let's say, to look at a very small vessels such as uh, cells, sorry, such as uh, red blood cells that are, um, I think, in the range of seven to five microns. Um, so, and if you use any magnification, like about above 20x, they're of course uh, more than good enough to look at cells. Thank you. The next question is, what window models are available to look at bone? Uh, yeah, for bone, uh, like the cranial one that we just show is a perfect model to look at a bone in the cranial site. Um, 
Uh, so it depends on what uh, function you want to look at in the bone. If you are looking at for non-load bearing bone, uh, of course, cranial is a great model. If you want to look at the load bearing bone, um, there is a model for uh, femur window chambers that you can place it in the femur side and you can look at expose the bone marrow. Uh, you can look at both uh, cortical and cancellous bone with that model. You can do the same with the cranial. Cranial is just, uh, I don't know what's the source of this question, but cranial also has a bone marrow. It's just a very little layer of bone marrow. It depends on what they want to track, but there are multiple models. I would say cranial and femur would be great models to look at bone. Thank you again, Nilfar. The next question is, are you able to see an image blood flow? Of course, we can we can see the blood flow uh, because we our system is very fast. Uh, the frame rate is about thirty to six frames per second, which means uh, within one second we can gather thirty to six frames at one at the same time. So we can visualize the blood flow and also can perform some in vivo analysis of the blood flow flow uh, velocity. Yeah. Thank you, Selena. We have time for one more question. So we're just gonna move in. And it is, uh, which software can be used to analyze the images? Okay, so the images that you got get from the system uh, that you can image, uh, analyze them with any software. Of course, IVM Studio um, is the best you can use because it's easy. Um, that comes with a system. And, but you can also analyze it with any other software that you are uh, comfortable with. All the open source um, software such as ImageJ um, or the ones that you need to acquire license to use uh, such as Imaris if you want to do uh, 3D uh, analysis. Um, but basically any software and the size of these images uh, in terms of volume uh, it's not, it's very small, like I would say around 700 kilobytes. Um, so you can easily handle it with any computer that you have. Thank you, Nilafar. We have reached the end of our session for today. And to be respectful of everyone's time, we're going to wrap things up. As mentioned at the start of the webinar, we'll be sure to answer any questions in the written transcript, and we'll work to get this out to you over the next week or so. I would like to thank Dr. Ann and Nilofar for the wonderful presentation today, and I trust that we have been able to provide you with some relevant information about the virtual demonstration of the item system. And as I mentioned at the beginning of today's webinar, this was the final session of four-part series, and if you wish to watch the previous sessions, please visit our website. If in the days and weeks to come you have further questions about the modalities discussed today, I encourage you to reach out to us here at Syntica, and we'll be happy to discuss further. We would welcome the opportunity to discuss your specific research goals and how any of our imaging systems could help move your work forward. Thank you again to all of you for taking time of your day to attend our session, and we look forward to seeing you at the future Syndic event. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.